Welcome to Cross TV. Another wonderful week to share with you and to share what God's been sharing with me so we can enlighten you. And we're so privileged that we get to go into 80 million households. That's amazing. We thank you for the privilege and honor of coming into your home. And I want to teach you a little bit today out of 1 Kings, 2 Kings, and also um, I want you to know a little bit about this spirit of Jezebel. The weeks to come, we'll go into it a little bit more. But I would like to share with you some of the traits and things that you'll be seeing in churches coupled with the spirit of Delilah, not Ahab, but Delilah. And Ahab was, was Jezebel's husband. He was the first, one of the kings of Israel who cross-married into a different culture and a different belief and literally turned his back upon Yahweh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God, the holy God of Israel. <clears throat> During those last days, we are going to see some demonstrations and manifestations of things that we've encountered and maybe we have not understood. And we're going to try to get to the root of some things that would portray themselves as something other than what they are. Some of the traits of Jezebel, we've flagrantly pinned on people saying that they've walked in that spirit and it hasn't really been true. They may have some of the, the personality traits of these spirits, but it's not the spirit of Jezebel. But Jezebel was a very cunning, manipulating, controlling, evil woman. And she was one of the first women to condemn and come against Christians in Israel. And so the Lord allowed her even to come into Israel because man has freedom of choice but what people were not aware of, they weren't used to a bold, outspoken, she was beautiful to look at, woman who came in and married a king of Israel, and she never backed down from her belief. She stood for the, the gods of Baal, and she had her husband Ahab build a temple and a place of worship for her many gods and she never backed down. What we see in her is she's relentless, she's bold, she's outspoken. Don't confuse that with someone's personality because they genuinely can be that way and not be walking in a Jezebel spirit. Also, gender is very important here. It doesn't just have to be a woman. That spirit can, can operate in, in a male just as easily as a female. And so we first saw this spirit become uh, unveiled in a woman, so we have kind of solely put that in that place of their Jezebels are women. But they're very controlling. They're, they usually work alone. They usually want to um, engage with the pastor or the prophet. People of, of le in leadership, they want to befriend them. They, they will have Delilah's and Ahab's working for them, but they will carry out their dirty work. They will usually do these things alone. They also will not receive correction. They will not receive direction. They will not succumb to the leadership of a church or a prophet, and they will come against those who speak anything to them other than co collating with their agenda. And do they have an agenda? They absolutely do. During the last days, the enemy wants to come against the body of Christ. He wants to come against those leaders, the anointed leaders that believe in Jesus, those leaders that have turned their lives over to Jesus because of all that he has done for them. And they, they know he is true and right and able to see them through whatever they're going through. And usually a Jezebel spirit 
will watch for a while, but then kind of worm its way up and want to become and begin to become their friend and become a leader and become someone that then wants to walk into your ministry, your leadership, and take over what you're doing. Criticism. They cannot take you know, any type of criticism. They want your place. All of this to say this. Jesus wants you to know what is going on right now. And we're just brushing over just the top of this because I, I'm going to pray for you and we're going to come against some of these spirits that are running rampant today. And Delilah, we're not going to go into a whole lot of Delilah, but she was one that would say something and it would come out of her mouth, and we know that she was beautiful. She, we know that Samson was mesmerized by her gift of talking, by her beauty, by her elegant ways of, of projecting herself to him. She knew powerful people, and Delilah would tell you one thing and, and fluff you up and encourage you and tickle your ears and turn around and be doing something very destructive and to your demise want to murder you and kill you and rob you of your strength. Beloved, these spirits are out there today. They're out there and they're running rampant because the enemy knows that this is the end time harvest. Do not be fooled by these people. Do not be fooled by these demons. Do not be mesmerized by power, by people puffing themselves up, by people saying, look at me, look at all I have done, because in the midst of that place, Jesus is not there. For the only person who receives true honor and glory is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach. He is our Savior. He's the one we believe in. He is our hope, our deliverer. He is our healer. He is the one that's coming back for his bride. He says, do not be afraid of these spirits. These spirits are more afraid of you, but be prepared. And don't come against these spirits unless you have walked through that place of gaining power in the spiritual realms to come against these spirits. And the Lord has told you to do, do that because sometimes as, as these demons will, will beat you up, they will physically assault you. As they have said, I know Paul, I know Jesus. Who are you? We have to gain the ground in the spiritual realms by going through things. God tests us in the midst of the battle. Will you see things? Will you hear things? Will you experience things? Yes, you will. Have you ever been sitting and you've watched this dark shadow go by your eyes and, and you'll go, oh, that was just my eyes playing tricks on me. And yet all of a sudden you may feel sad or lonely or depressed, or all of a sudden you're thinking about something you know you shouldn't even be thinking about, and you don't even correlate the two as being in the spiritual realm. You think it's part of your personality. It's a situation you're going through. It's something that, that you've been thinking about, but truly, beloved, it can be demon presence that come. How did they come in? Can they come in through a telephone? Yes. Can they come in with somebody else walking into your home? Yes. It's called a transference of spirits. Can they come in through your lineage and line generationally because your parents or your grandparents or people in generations before have walked in that sin and it hasn't been broken or renounced? in your family, it still is a place that has wounding in your soul. And as your soul is wounded, that becomes a place of identification for the enemy to come and wound you again in that place because he has permission through that wounding, through that area of hurt and pain. Maybe you have have been through a hard childhood. Maybe you have been abandoned. 
Maybe you've been lied to. Maybe you've been overlooked in a job. Maybe you feel like you just don't measure up. Maybe you don't have a family who loves or encourages you. Maybe you're just feeling really alone. Maybe you've lost something that was so dear to you. And even you thought the Lord was telling you, this is what you're going to walk in next. And it feels like it didn't happen. It feels like the rug was pulled out from under you. And you're feeling alone and going, did I hear God? And confusion comes in. And then you begin to remember that place of pain because now you're feeling it again. Beloved, we have to get to the wounding in the soul because when it attacks your soul, it hits your mind, will, and emotions. That's what your soul is made up of. And your emotions are the things that will run out of control. Your mind will begin to attach itself to your emotions and your mind will be flooded and overwhelmed with things that you thought you had overcome, thoughts you, you thought we're not of your own, and they're probably not yours, beloved. But the Lord wants you to be able to identify what is going on in your heart and life. Because you're a Christian, you may think, well, the enemy can't attack me in my own home, and he can't attack me in church. He, he, there's, there's a covering of Jesus over me, and that is true. But the Lord is going to teach you how to fight spiritual warfare. He's going to teach your fingers to war. He's going to teach you how to proclaim the word of God that would bind and rebuke the enemy and cast him back to the dry places where he has to stay until the day of judgment. The Lord wants you to know that we do not war against flesh and blood but against evil principalities in high places. That this is real, beloved. And he will allow us to walk through those places until we learn to become sensitized to the spiritual realm and we can even begin to name the demons of encounter that have come into our midst. Are they real? Can the enemy come to us even in the night through your dreams? If he can't get you, can he go to your family and your children and your grandchildren? Yes, he will try. But the Lord is going to teach us how to rise up and, and pray and bombard the forces of the enemy. For we have to make our prayers count. And we have to take all of these principalities, powers, high-level demons, low-level demons, imps into captivity back to the pit of hell. When we keep them there, they do not have legal authority to come back to planet Earth. You may say, well, I, I don't want to believe that. We walk around and we have um, been influenced by demons. Well, beloved, you're in a time of war. And it's time to resist the enemy and flee. Because any wounding in your soul will give him legal access to what he wants to continue to do in your life. If something keeps happening over and over and over again, then you have to see what the common denominator is and it's usually you. Are you making choices that would allow the enemy to come back? Are you making choices that allow compromise to come in? Are you making choices where you have put down your defense and your protection through choices that you're making? Or is it fear, doubt, and unbelief? Is it so far-fetched for you to believe that there's a spiritual realm that's so real and so wants to take you captive and rob you of your strength, rob, rob you of your dignity, rob you of your respect, your anointing, and then comes to kill you. The enemy kill, comes to rob, kill, and destroy, beloved. And today I want you to know the lover of your soul wants to woo you in with loving kindness. Yes, he's gentle, he's kind, he's committed to you, he's relentless, he loves you so much. His heart was never for you to suffer a minute. Never, never. But he knows because we're in a fallen world and man has made a choice to allow compromise in that he has to teach us, even in the midst of the battle, how to strategize and come against these things. 
Do not be afraid to rise up. Do not be afraid to fight. Do not be afraid to use the name of Jesus, for every name will bow down to the name of Jesus. But I'm going to teach you how to pray today. I'm going to teach you how to come against these things that may have plagued your mind, may have made you feel at times like you were losing it, that, that, that your thoughts are taking over your life and robbing you of joy, that there's demonic chatter, that there's fear in your heart, that there's wounding in your soul. And you may be a Christian and walked with the Lord many years, and yet you still have not encountered freedom. Beloved, today is the day of freedom. Today is the day of your redemption. Today we come before the throne of grace. And wherever you're at right now, beloved, the Lord wants you to hear this. I love you with an everlasting love. I have set up divine appointments for you. I'm going to teach you strategies. I'm going to download from the heavenlies those things that are about to happen and loosed on planet Earth. I've dispatched angels on behalf of you. I have given you charge over every situation. I'm calming your mind. I'm cutting off demonic chatter. I am healing your heart, for there are so many good things that are about to be loosed. You will not be desperate. You will not walk in despair. You are not alone. You are not fragile. You are not weak, beloved, for the enemy has tried to declare to you who you are. But I'm telling you today, I've raised you up. I've raised you up up as a mighty woman and a mighty man of valor, one that will make a difference, one that will change the atmosphere, one that will cause demons to flee. I go back effortlessly now to Adam and Eve and cut off all all assignments, every vex, every hex, every generational curse, every word curse, every spirit of lack and disease. Are you used to having your blessing robbed from you? Well, today the Lord says no more, for he's invading households. He's coming in and taking back what the enemy has taken. He's going to bring your children home. He's bringing deliverance to your heart. He's restoring your soul. He's going to speak to you. He's going to call you by name. He's going to wake you in the night and tell you of his love for you. Oh, beloved, do not be afraid of what the enemy throws at you. Keep your eyes upon Jesus. Keep your eyes upon Jesus, only him. Call upon his name, for only in his name is there hope and deliverance. For every demon runs from precious Jesus. He doesn't even have to raise up his hand. All he has to do is show up. There's something so amazing about his presence that even when you feel scared and afraid and alone and deserted, he comes in and he says, oh no, you are none of those things. Let me take you in my arms and show you who I really am. And as you begin to be penetrated and saturated with his love, there will be times where you won't have to say a word. You will just walk in an area and demons will flee. Don't you know who abides and abounds in you? We are going to walk through streets and there's going to be deliverance. We are going to walk through houses and children and families are going to be restored. We are going to see the hospitals emptied out. We are going to watch warehouses filled with all that people have need of because the Lord supernaturally is doing a work and he's going to cover and provide for his people. He's loosing new ways of us to create wealth. Oh, beloved, you have to get rid of this stuff. You have to get rid of it because of what the Lord's about to pour over mankind. Get excited, for I know you've been hit, and I know it feels like you'll never get through it. 
And it feels like you've been over and over this place time and time again. But today, your deliverer has come. He said, this day, it ends. This day, begin to hope for some good things. This day, to be, begin to declare your, your victory. For I am removing the stumbling blocks. For I am your cornerstone. Jesus is the one you look to. Him and him alone. Oh, beloved. As the spirit of the Lord is loosed within your households today, as you begin to feel him dealing with your heart, as he so gently says, you about done? You about done doing that? Will you let me come in? And will you let me make you completely new? Your spirit's new. Now let me make your soul new. Let me do a new thing within you that you think differently, walk differently, carry yourself differently. You'll no longer walk with your head held down as one who was abused and misused, but you will walk as royalty with your head up knowing whose you are and who you are in Jesus. Jesus is coming back, beloved. He is coming back, and you will see him face to face, and he will look into your eyes and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. As you surrender all to him, isn't that your heart's cry today? Isn't that your heart's cry that he would hear you and you would know his voice? <coughs> Bow your heads wherever you are. <coughs> Excuse me. We come against every evil principality of darkness. You will bow down to the name of Jesus. We declare and decree the majesty of Yeshua HaMashiach. We declare that we will be with him throughout eternity and no weapon formed against us will prosper. We come into the throne of grace and we exalt you, King Jesus, and we bless you for your name is above every name. And yes, Father, only you are worthy of all praise. We come with hearts of expectancy for that which you pour over planet Earth has not been done in all the Earth. Father, we call in the prodigals. We call in the lost, the brokenhearted, the hurting, the abused and the misused. We call them in. And we ask now in the name of Jesus that that declaration will be that which, which, Lord, only you can do. I ask you, Father, to do a new work that has not been done, God. Oh, Lord, our hearts cry out for more of you. It's only you that we want. It really is only you, King Jesus. It's you that we desire. We need your touch. We want to get to know the angels that you've dispatched around us. We want to get to know your ways, not just your hand anymore of what you can give us and what you can do for us, but how can we bless you, Father? How can we make you laugh? How can we encounter your heart? Touch us afresh and anew today. Give us hope. King Jesus, turn us away from those things that would literally destroy our life. I pray for deliverance today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And I ask that you uproot everything within their hearts and minds that are not of you. And you will comply with the living word of God. Back to the pit where you will stay until the day of judgment. And now, beloved, I want to thank you for allowing me to come into your household. I bless you with Abraham's blessing. And I want you to know today that Jesus loves you so much. He loves you so much. And your destiny is great. Thank you.